Hey guys, Thunder Shot here, uh, back with another ranking video because <coughs> Mediacom's internet sucks ass and I can't record a gameplay video today. Uh, so I'm making this instead. Uh, I'm doing a Apex Legends Season 5 ranking tier list. You know, I thought, you know, Season 5 is coming to end uh, five days now, about like five. Uh, hopefully, by the time this is uploaded, it still be five. <laughs> Uh, five, four days somewhere in there. Uh, before season six, so I thought, you know what, I'll do uh, I'll do a little tier list of the legends, and so now I'm ranking them based on how I think they are competitively. So like the pro scene, and so yeah, that's what I'm based off of because that's what I'm used to, and not used to playing, but used to watching and analyzing and all that. So. I'll be making, basing it off of that. So like tier one would be S tier, tier two, A tier, tier three, B tier, tier four, C tier, tier five, D tier. Okay, so we're gonna start us off. Let's go left to right, okay? Uh Loba, straight. I think I'll put it in tier four. Because she has very little things she can do for her, her um uh, squad like getting like really good loot and all that but overall really bad and her Q time her Q is really bad because it's you're good if you use it in a fight or to get somewhere you're probably gonna die using it and so she's just kind of useless in terms of fighting she can't lock down any area she can't get her team anywhere she doesn't give you any more information all she does is kind of give you loot every like 90 seconds and that's it's just an RNG based character that's not really good, right? Uh, Bangalore, I would put tier three. Tier three, the reason I put here is because she has the best passive in the game. For those who don't know, uh, Bangalore's passive is she gets shot at, she doubles her speed, right? It's called double time. Uh, and so she, if you shoot her and don't beam her, she's moving really fast. On the other hand, all her other abilities screw up her teammates. Smoke, you can't see people in a fight. Uh, you alt, and you're literally studying your entire team, right? And so she has a good passive and definitely can be played and competitive, but you would not pick her unless it's like a low, low elo game. Let's say you're in the esports arena and you, uh, you know, which is a bunch of amateur teams and your team like TSM and just want to, I don't know, have fun. Maybe you would see reps pick Bangalore up because you know why it doesn't matter, right? But like in the after tournament, you would rarely see turn uh Bangalore. I uh, know Gen G ran at season one, uh at Poland, and X Games was very minimal minimum success, but it can be pulled off, but definitely not what you want to see, right? A uh, lifeline, I definitely put it at a tier two, tier two because. The reason she's not tier 1 is because, well, she has care package, healing, and all that, which is really good. She's a really good champion and definitely has her place in a uh, competitive setting if you want to run her. Uh, especially with the new uh, changes with her passive. Instead of fast seal, you have a shield for your teammates. The only reason is that she doesn't give you much information. And her package is going to take a long time to, uh, like, fall down and... She's kind of bad in that gunfight uh, until one of your teammates gets down, right? So, because typically you replace a Watson with a lifeline, so you're losing the ability to lock down a building really fast. Uh, which you would see with Watson or Cossack, and then typically with lifeline, it's a character that replaces that. And so that's why I just think she's good and definitely has her really good position and competitive but if she wants to be more competitive you would have instead of buffing her you'd see nerfs to other characters right that's like why she's tier two instead of tier one or something like that okay caustic i would put tier one the reason for caustic tier one is because he can lock down a building really easily and counters ego uh rev crypto uh wraith comps and is really good at locking down a building. His ultimate is really good, and he's a really good champion. Like he, he definitely, I wouldn't say he's better than Watson, but he's definitely 
a good uh, counter pick to Watson sometimes because he can destroy Watson fences. He can destroy Watson alts. He can lock down a building. He can uh, prevent enemy team from moving really with his ultimate. Uh, and you never want to take a building threat with Caustic, right? And that's his only downside. But like, if you're running a Wraith path for a Caustic, you're going to get a building anyway because you Wraith portal into a building and you have that building to yourself. It's really hard to siege a building against a Caustic and it's really easy to siege a building as Caustic as well, right? Any building fight you take as Caustic, you're probably going to end up winning, right? Revenant, uh, despite what most people think, I think he's a tier two in the competitive scene. So maybe for the fact that he's really good, but you have to have a niche play style to play him. Uh, for instance, uh, TSM, when all the nerfs came out on Watson, Lifeline, and all that stuff, they decided to run Revenant, Crypto Wraith, uh, Revenant for the totem, the uh, totem that lets you prevent Yuri from dying, uh, Wraith to portal in with the totem buff, and Crypto to destroy the shields and get scouting information so he's good but he's only really good in certain comps and you can't really change that comp up too much unless you're running like a let's say uh revenant gibby wraith which is the other comp you see you uh which is really good you take portal in you dome if you need to and lets you take longer pro prolonger fights and more engages for free but he definitely is not S tier, and I think he's good where he's at now. I don't think he's any changes, right? I think him being a slightly niche or character to play in the competitive scene is good because if he got buffed, he would be overpowered. So I think he's in a good position now, but I wouldn't consider him an S tier in the competitive scene, right? And similar to Bloodhound, uh, Bloodhound ran with really good... Um, completion like not completion i want to describe it uh success uh with complexity who are hyper ego team and comp you know they run uh if i remember right they run gib wraith bloodhound and bloodhound they use for the scans to get information which is really good but again bloodhound is one of those things where he's a niche or character he's definitely not top of the top tier uh in terms of a competitive scene and we only see a few select teams running it. Therefore, I mean, he's definitely not overpowered. Uh, yeah, that's why I just don't think it's a tier of one character. Any other competitive scene? Uh, so I think I think I have to put Crypto here. Uh, the reason I put Crypto there is he's good at getting scouting information and tracking shields and all that. But he... I don't know if he feels like his kit could use more almost like there's a lot of, there's a lot of bugs with him and you need to you're always the last one to push in a fight but you typically have the long range guns right and so like when you're trying to finish people off as crypto it just doesn't work and you don't have that much value in a team fight past your ultimate because you're so far away from your team once you do it and your team has to leave you to go use your ultimate and so if you you're literally solo and so you just have to hope no other team pushes you because if another team pushes you while you're in drone ulting an enemy team you're dead and your team is going to lose that next lose, lose that engagement right because even if they go back it's a 2v1 it's a 3v2 and you're down and it's just not good so i just don't think he is good enough to be a tier two but not bad enough to be tier four and he's just kind of perfect in tier three in my opinion uh pathfinder straight s tier uh to, in comp you want to know the next zone you want to know you want to get as much information as you can in apex uh and so knowing where each zone is going to be to allow you to early rotate is going to allow you to get a good spot end zone to get maximum placement points. And with 
currently, not sure if they're going to see it in Season 6, but currently Pathfinder is only one can hit beacons to tell you the next zone, so you can early rotate to that zone, get an end zone position to get placement points, and he's just basically necessary. Almost every comp runs Pathfinder uh, because he has that zone. Right? He knows he can get that zone, and then he has zip line to get teams to higher ground, so say you're going God Spot in King's Canyon, uh, any God Spot, or... Uh, you have a zip jump to get to the next one. Uh, yeah, it's kind of like he's necessary in comp. Right, to allow you to really rotate. Gibraltar, I would also put S tier. Simply because his dome offers so much. Right? It offers fast heal, faster reses, and a barrier to allow yourself to reset. Right? Uh... It's just, it's so good. Uh, in the competitive scene, in my opinion. Uh, Matt Pickett, if you're watching this for some reason, I'm sorry. Mirage is a D tier, tier 5 uh, character in terms of uh, competitive. He doesn't offer much to his team. Uh, and at a professional level, everyone can tell decoys from fakes, right? Uh, and the only reason, the only person I could see, we see running Matt Pickett, it, running this is Matt Pickett. Even he's, trans he's transferring more to Gibraltar role because Mirage is just not good anymore, right? Even with his buffs in the competitive scene, he is trash. Okay, no professional team would run it past Matt Pickett because he's a he was was a Mirage one trick for so long and he knows a lot of attack and how to play him but one person being good at the character does not make the character good right that's like calling Zenyatta meta in Overwatch simply because J. Jonax is really good at Zenyatta it's you can't compare the two okay uh, then Octane another D tier doesn't offer much to his team past jump pad his entire kit's basically based around contributing to himself fast and not his teammates. Uh, and so, like, like you can run faster. Uh, and you have a jump pad, but that's not much. That's not much. And especially, oh, but he has a double jump. Well, he's going to get Kovacs out of the air. Like, people at a professional level can hit those shots consistently. And you're screwed if you use a jump pad. Right, or to reposition like a wraith portal is so much safer. Pathfinder zip is a lot safer. Uh, Gibraltar's dome and hub rotates a lot safer than jump pad. Right, again, there's probably like a team out there that runs Octane and thinks, Oh, he's so good, but one team running Octane does not make him good in the competitive scene. It means you guys are just happen to be really good at running Octane. Right, that means you guys are able to play around him because it's not a Octane is not a character who plays around other characters. Octane is a character that, that you play around, right? Because you have to support him because he's not a team character. That's just it. That's just facts. Like, you can't th fake that. Like, he's not a team character at the core of it. Watson, on the other hand, straight S tier. Watson is easily the most important character in comp, in my opinion, because she has fences, she has shield gen. Uh, you see almost every team having a Watson simply because you can lock down the entire area of the map with fences and uh, your shield gen. It allows you to save on resources. Uh, allows you to maybe take riskier angles because you know you have the shield gen for Watson. Yeah, it's able to, the ability to lock down an entire area is so important in the competitive scene because it allows you to basically get placement points for free, right? Because nobody wants to push a building that's Watsoned up and wants you running about, say, a Caustic or a Crypto that can destroy those fences. But even then, you there's so much work you have to do to push a Watson in a building that the Watson team is free just to push you while you do that, right? You have to destroy fences, you have to destroy shield gen, and a Watson team can just jump on you while you're doing that. Well, your focus is diverted, and you know it's basically free, free KP for that Watson team. Watson is so good and competitive. Uh, it's she is the honestly, she is the easiest person to put in S here, right? 
uh, it's, not, it's not been dumb in mind. Even with her nerf with uh, shield gen only being up for 90 seconds, it's so good still. The, and you just time it with alt excels. So yeah, uh, Wraith, also an S tier champion, uh, legend. I mean, simply because of the fact that she uh, she allows the scouting abilities. And so let's say you are want to like scout for the next position for the next rotate, you as your eighth with your Q can easily go out, take a little more risky of an angle, find a place to rotate, and then portal your team to that rotation, and you get that for free, right? Uh, you might have to take a fight or something like that, but like portal is so important because it allows you to rotate without taking damage. Uh, your Q is super good if you want to go scout, you can Q. Uh, it's a really good end zone with presetting portals. Uh, it's zone 7, uh, where it's like the size of this on the map. Um, it allows you to rotate easier and allows you to preset portals, end zone, uh, which has one game before. Your Q is important, especially the end zone, your Q is important. And it's really good if you want to go peek and start getting shot at, you can Q back to your original position. Uh, where you're scouting to find a rotation. Uh, so yeah, so this is, let me just real quick. I'll show you guys a full image right here if you guys want to see that. But this is going to be my official Apex Legends Legend tier list based on the competitive side of things, right? Like if I did like a ranked one, Watson would be down here, you know, it'd be completely, it would be different. I don't know about completely different, it'd be different, but, uh, you guys go. That's the Thundershot official tier list based on competitive. All right. Peace.